I'm Barry Funkhauser, and this is the Barry Funkhauser Show. Well, as we do at the end of every week, we bring on a guest. And today on the show, please welcome Marketing and Promotions Director of our favorite radio station in Southern California, and also Holding Down Mornings with Nick Harcourt, another local. Please welcome Jets on the program. Hello. Hi, Barry. Thank you hey, for Jen. having me. Thanks so much for being here. And as always, <laughs> I'm here with my co-host and general know-it-all current events guy, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hi, oh, Joe. hey, wait. Go, go me. Go me. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're all three local natives. And last night, we saw that band perform at a <laughs> local venue. Yes. That was fun, huh? So good. No vacancy in Hollywood. Ah, oh, they know how to do it. I love that place. Hey, do uh, does everybody know who the local natives are? I mean, they're they're relatively new, right? Do we even have do we have a clip, Barry, that we can that we can share with people about who this awesome band is? Sure. Here's some local natives. Listen. Okay, so I must admit, I don't like a lot of new music, and <laughs> there's a couple of songs that I do like, like Fleet Foxes is a band that I really enjoy, and there's yeah. Interpol from way back in the early aughts, but Local Natives sure did surprise me with those songs. I had no idea. And uh, you put that whole thing together, didn't you, Jet? <laughs> with the help of uh, our program director, Mookie, and our amazing production techs, uh, Matt and Tristan, they're fantastic. And so together we coordinate these events and promote them and execute them. And they're honestly probably the most fun thing about my job, that and, and of course, you know, being on air with Nick. But it's, yeah, the, the, it's so exciting. So. It's amazing. I just love seeing. I just love seeing bands in like really small venues like that because yes. you could get like you, it's like really personal. And mm -hmm. the other thing about local natives that I love is that they weren't the killers on stage. Like the killers are stupid, stupid, boring on stage. Oh, come they on. don't oh, move come on. except like Brandon Shade. Flowers like runs around. <laughs> And stuff. And don't get me wrong. Like I love, I I really like the Killers' music. But oh, he got yeah. better over time, though. He oh, can do it now. But, oh, but this band, this band was entertaining. They so were entertaining. Like, they were like interacting with each other on the stage and running around and doing stuff and getting in with the crowd and stuff. And it was fun. It was so fun. I love when bands like get to like kind of let loose and and not be like you know super like professional band like yeah, oh, you no can't talk to us. We're like yeah, we're like super <laughs> stuffy and stuff. No, they like get down with you and like you know they're like asking people questions. It was fun. Yes. I love that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, they weren't just like statues there playing their guitars. You know, that's, now Jet, I gotta tell you how I met Joe way long oh, ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. 1997 was the year, and I was very interested in radio. And my friend, who he wasn't my friend at the time, but everybody on the radio is your friend, you know, this guy. His I, name, was, I was a stuffy DJ that didn't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> <He was> a, <laughs> yeah. So I win tickets to Irvine Meadows to see the Warp Tour and take a train down there. And I'm waiting to pick up my tickets from Will Call. And who's there but Joe, the guy <laughs> I won tickets for from. And, you know, I'm like 6, 17, you know, little this is like my third or fourth concert. And so I'm like excited, like, 
there's the DJ. And then I waited in line with him and he was with all of his cooler friends, had nothing to do with me. But he's like, hey, have a good time at the show, man. And he was gone. And you know what? I was like, I always thought of that. I was like, that was so cool. Someday I hope to be that guy with my dumb fans. Yep. Going, hey, have a good show, you know? And no, look what I, you honestly, have. I don't remember anything <laughs> of that show at all. That's how many, like back in the late 90s, I went to so many shows that they all had now have just like blended Blurred into together. one. <laughs> and it's so hard to differentiate. The only ones that I really can are the ones uh, are the shows that I went to outside of uh, Los Angeles or or Southern California. Oh, uh, you know, because yeah. like, you know, because like. Uh, when you know when you live here and you just work in radio or promotions because I yep. after Santa Barbara I I jumped over and I was in college radio at MCA for a little bit mm -hmm. and I worked at MCA and drive through and so we were just going to like shows and shows and shows and like promotions and doing this and that and yeah it just kind of all blends together like I I think I went to see like face to face maybe 10 times at House oh, of Blues just at one place yeah oh, my favorite yeah one of my favorites uh, you know, so it's like you, all those things just like kind of blend together. You know, I can't remember all the social distortion shows that I went to back in the oh, day. Gosh. They all, I, it's all just like one show now. <laughs> I yeah, will say you, social you D. Your favorite show? Yeah. Well, I would say my favorite is my first show that I attended, like my first rock show that I went to by myself, like of my own volition. I wasn't there, you know, with my parents or anybody else. Like this was like, I chose to go with friends to this concert and, you know, I'm 15 years old going by myself. Um, but yeah, social D house of blues, the original one on sunset, uh, you know, rest in peace. That was, I love that venue, but, uh, but yeah, that was my, that was like my first concert that I, that I took myself to. And so well, that was, so, that was uh, let me see. You're, you're what you're like 26. So that was like <laughs> early night. Yeah. Your age just keeps getting younger. I, I just keep getting it, younger. So. I know. I love it. I, first I was, first I was 28. Now I'm 26. This is know, great. Right? This see, is great for you. This podcast more often i'm aging backwards <laughs> when um we were probably at that show together because that was one of their their uh christmas shows where they did like a week straight right yeah i think I, yeah. yeah it was like 2005 i want to say nice yeah they, i think oh, it was man, around those then. such mm -hmm. fun shows i'm so sad the end, the house of guys, is gone. that was it yeah. that was yeah. like I know. the end yeah that was where everything was like it you know i mean it obviously the sunset strip is nothing like it used to be um really you know, isn't. which is which is such a shame because i love it and you know i used to i used to uh sort of live right next to the viper room so it was like oh. it was a stomping ground for me for many many years and and it's yeah it's I, I i really after the house of blues was gone and you know key club turned into one oak and all that so it's just it yeah. kind of just you know it doesn't have that same feel anymore that that yeah. sunset strip vibe I, I miss some of the other uh, smaller venues that went under because mm -hmm. like one of my favorite places. And if I ever win the lottery, I'm buying it and I'm bringing <laughs> it back. S Spaceland. Spaceland. Oh, in, yes. oh man. I, I never been there, but it sounded cool. Oh, Spaceland was was probably my favorite small venue in um in all of Los Angeles. I saw so many fun bands there back in like the late 90s early 2000s we used to have in los angeles this thing called poptopia that happened every year and that happened like for five years straight and it was basically like all pop and indie rock bands would all descend on los angeles and it was kind of our version of south by southwest Ooh, I and it was like it. all for Indian pop stuff. And it was great because like I remember going to Spaceland and I saw like Nerf Herder there and I'm friends oh. with them. So that was fun. And that, but it was so fun because there was like 150 people in this room that holds like 120. So we're all packed in there <laughs> and, you know, they're playing mm -hmm. all their songs from like the 90s and they rip into the Buffy the Vampire Slayer theme and stuff. Oh, so, it good. Was so, you know, it's stuff like that's so much fun. And that's, I like, love like, that. I know that's the kind of fun stuff that we get to do in in marketing and promotions and radio, even though. 
it can be a 12 to 14 hour a day job. <laughs> <laughs> I know the, the, the perks are great. And, and, you know, speaking of like, you know, venues that aren't here anymore, you know, that was like, I think one of the most like traumatizing things, you know, for, for me being a music lover and someone who loves seeing live music is having so many of these like independent venues, not make it. That was the hardest thing I think with, with the pandemic and, you know, like the, the satellite and, and other, other amazing oh, uh, venues. Oh. Yeah. It's, it, having having kind of these areas that were you know my stomping ground in my formidable years of developing my taste in the music that I like that was kind of a huge huge thing and I was I, it was really sad to to have that happen and and you know I always think about oh you know if you had all the money in the world what would you do oh bring back all these like iconic venues and and you know bring them back to their full glory and you know it's it it would be great it's still expensive <laughs> oh. So Jets bar and let's call it a day. And bring all your friends there. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Go to Jets. <laughs> Heck yeah. All right. You guys want to get into the news today? Yeah. All right. Well, Jet, we gave you the entire newspaper of the week and asked you to pick some highlights. So would you pick the first story you want to talk about there? Yeah. I want to talk about um so Microsoft's an, uh, announcement about, you know, incorporating AI into Oh, you're going to read software, that part? You could right? read that part. Fine. Yeah. 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 So well, Microsoft and, and artificial intelligence, Barry, can you tell me more? Let's hear more about it. Listen. A multi-billion dollar duel is underway to be the front door of the Internet. A race starts today. Microsoft announced this week that artificial intelligence will soon allow conversations with its software and search engine Bing. Google raced to announce similar plans. Both tech giants trying to change the internet from a world in which we navigate between web pages to one where interactive discussions with chatbots gives us information. We only scratch the surface of what's possible with AI. For a generation, Google has been the verb for finding things online, and it commands more than 90% of the search engine market. But Microsoft, thanks to its partnership with ChatGPT maker OpenAI, is on the attack. The most profitable, large software business is search. So I look at this and say, I just have to earn one user at a time. I've never, ever felt this liberated in terms of opportunity in the days ahead. It definitely is an arms race. Bing is rocketing up the App Store charts. So much of the world is organized around serving Google and understanding what people are searching for in Google. Chinese tech giants Baidu and Alibaba also plan to debut new AI technology. But while chatbots look authoritative, AI can make mistakes. Google's own demo for its new chatbot called Bard included a basic factual error. And research has shown that AI trained to mimic human language picks up our biases. Just having for-profit companies pushing this technology out uh, is a recipe for a multitude of problems. Critics worry the race to make money from AI technology is moving too fast. I would love to hear a CEO saying, look, we've got the research, we're capable of making it, but we're pausing, and we urge others to do so as well, instead of just saying, oh, we're going to outrace the other. But with billions at stake, the race is already on. Jake Ward, NBC News, San Francisco. You know, and I looked up a couple of people talking about it, and a lot of YouTubers are coming out saying that AI is the scariest thing they've ever seen. <laughs> yes, I would agree with that. <laughs> but like Bing, it, it's going to start on Bing, right? I don't know. I mean, it's that's the thing is that it's it, so. Like they were saying, you know, search is pretty much dominated by Google. Everything is served for Google. Google is what we use to analyze everything. I know that in marketing and promotions, Google analytics are huge. And so it's everything's kind of already going through that filter as it is just by going to your said browser. Everything's kind of already being filtered through Google and things like that and companies like that. But, you know, these AI is not foolproof. Like they said, there are issues with it. And so that's the terrifying fact is that it's not perfect. I love technological advancement. And so it's like, part of me wants to absolutely see this come to fruition. And then the other part of me is absolutely terrified and shaking in my boots because, you know, you can have biases that are injected into that. And then on top of it too, you can have, uh, you know, just God, the human element in <laughs> yeah. how this is created. Say, like you can't, 
have. I was, and, I was watching this yeah. thing on Twitch, Jed. Yeah. It's, it's called Watch Me Forever, and it's AI-generated Seinfeld episodes. Why? It was the funniest, most awkward thing I watched for a good few hours, you know? Because the. Uh, you the applause... spent hours on that? Yeah, I did, man. <laughs> no, man, that stuff is crap. Dude, and I, 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 I got I was through like 10 to show minutes it to and somebody I was like, else, though. Oh. I was trying to show it to somebody else, though, and it got blocked and banned because the Seinfeld AI went like biased. And like got blocked for using foul language, started doing yeah. dirty jokes. Well, yeah, you yeah. see the the tweet bots that started, you know, a couple of years ago, and you see that all of a sudden they end up racist or like yeah. you know out out in this like weird like chat world, and it's just it's it's really scary. And I know that it's all beta, it's all being tested and the kinks are being worked out a lot of them in real time. But at the same time, yeah, it's, it's definitely scary. I just don't feel (laughs) like you can have AI trained on everything because there is so much bias out there and there's so much crap just like out online that isn't true. So you gotta, you gotta train, if you're going to train these AI, you got to train them on like factual data Mm -hmm. and, uh, you got to take away some. Uh, uh, you got to definitely take away like the the anti semitism, the misogynistic posts. Oh, um, definitely, yeah. You know, let's. You know, it's. I'm fine with curse words, but I know a lot of people aren't. So you gotta like, you gotta make sure that the AI bot knows, like, hey, these are terms that we probably shouldn't use. Exactly. And then you gotta like throw on all the racist terms on top of that. It's it's exactly what we do in the back end of any kind of application website anything internet related when we're doing our metadata and our seo stuff we're putting in all of those keyword blocks yep you know it's still we still have to do all that stuff because everybody is that way down on you when you have to do that (laughs) it's like the honestly it's like one of the what is the worst word i can think of right now and type it in (laughs) <laughs> oh, I, I have a bunch. I have a whole list of them, but I can't say them because we try to be. Is there like a master log? Is there a master <laughs> a master list of all the bad words out there? For- well, George Carlin yes. had seven. <laughs> yeah, it's expand. It's expanded. Oh, absolutely. Since then, <laughs> um, no. There, there are master lists that you can get out there for like you know unsafe words and things like that. Mm-hmm. The one thing that um. I, I, I want to bring up about AI is the fact that everyone thinks that this is going to be a job killer. And I agree. <laughs> I think that it is going to uh, pull some maybe lower level uh, jobs. But AI is only as good as the person who is controlling it and putting in the inputs. Mm-hmm. So if you, you can screw around with it and you can you can take your time and you can probably get the information you want. But you're going to need to have a professional in in charge and in the driver's seat if you're going to want to get effective results. Absolutely. When you're it's using an AI. It's next update, you know, and who's going to yeah, update yes. it. Yeah. So, yeah, that absolutely makes Elon's sense. Elon's going to update it, Jet. The oh, dear. That's, that's the biggest <laughs> problem we have here. You know, I feel the same. I feel the same way about all the art AI stuff. Like, yeah, sure. Like, mm-hmm. I can go in as a non-artist and, like, you know, put in some prompts and get some stuff back. Um, and that's, you know, for some people, that's going to work. But unless you are an actual trained artist or you know someone who has so much experience that they have all the necessary knowledge about what makes art art you know the, you're not going to get great results from those art AIs and it's the same yeah. thing with like chat gpt you're only going to get results as good as the input you put in you, you, mm-hmm. as as good as your input and you need to be savvy enough to know that when the results come back, you can spot inconsistencies and false statements that the AI is making. Well, and so, that's the thing too, is I think that, you know, along with this, a larger conversation to have, I think as a society is incorporating that into our education system, you know, Hey, here's how you're going to interact with artificial intelligence. You know, here are things to spot here are, you know, warning signs here are, you know, it, it, how to find implicit bias and things like that, you know? Yes, so it's yes. like, oh, that's yes. the thing is, is I think that that would need to come because otherwise then we fall 
fall into that horror story motif of, oh yeah, the AI is now taking over everything and we don't know what happened or where it came from. It's because we're all, you know, sitting there blind with our, you know, hands over our eyes. So I think that, you know, that has to be incorporated. That has to be added to our infrastructure um, as a whole is to, to be able to spot that sort of stuff. Oh yeah, no, I completely agree. I, I, um, just one quick aside, the mm -hmm. semantics of AI versus machine learning really bugs me because this isn't actually artificial intelligence. It's just all machine learning. Yeah. It's just AI is just such an easy way to say stuff, but mm -hmm. it's, it's, I don't know, it, the semantic, um, person in me is just like no this is uh, it just drives me crazy every time we say it i just gotta i gotta <laughs> I, know, get, I just gotta get AI. over it yeah <laughs> it's not yeah, true exactly. AI. so okay so <laughs> as so as a marketer like mm -hmm. i have my own opinion about this but how do you think this you this, guys control the world with your how, data uh, yeah, i know we do <laughs> we actually do how do you think in the next 10 years like let's not get like too far out Mm -hmm. But in 10 years, how do you feel like this is going to affect our careers, you know, in marketing? I honestly, I, I, I could see it being effective in a way of, you know, honestly, eliminating more marketing jobs. I could see that because I mean, think about it this way in the next decade or so, maybe a little longer. Uh, what if you have a, an AI bot that is your, you know, your friendly AI bot, everyone has this, you know, thing in their house that's connected to all things and, you know, they can serve you up anything. And what if that, that, machine learning, what if that machine learns how to create ads and ads for each individualized person and they're able to serve it up to them right in the comfort of their own home? That takes out the entire marketer's job. You know, like there might be a promoter or someone who's putting on a show and they, they're going to say, oh yeah, sure. We've got uh, this artist confirmed for this venue, confirmed for this day. And they just put that into a system and then these bots know they're humans and then they're able to serve them up exactly what they're looking for, which is kind of what we have now. But in a, you know, I'm talking in a way of like super serving and immediately now we're getting serving. Into the deep state jet. So I don't know how to do this here. Uh, it's it's, it's awesome. terrifying it's in that sense. Like, you know, and I'm, yeah, I'm going to buy a bunch of protein a powder and pills. <laughs> Stop yeah. it. No. Stop it. I'm not in a bunker, but you know, I could see that where it, where it kind of cuts out that middleman, maybe between, you know, promoter and and actual, you know, consumer, there might be something different. You know, I think it's going to change the way, but that's the thing though is that's the that's it's also hard to say because marketing, I swear every 3 months is completely different. It it's totally like a different changes. animal every 3 to 6 months, so it's like what worked for you 6 months ago to a year ago, it, it doesn't necessarily work for you anymore. So things could evolve to the point where it, it it's actually helpful. Who knows? I mean, that's the thing is it's kind of like, you know, I can you're speculate, get both. but yeah, you're going to get the helps, mm -hmm. you know, and then you're also going to get the, you know, I, I've got my first phone call was like, hello, may I please speak to mm, mm, Barry Funkhauser? And I was like, is that a robot <laughs> or just a weird person? Yeah, we're going to yeah. get a lot. We're going to get a lot of that. I think it's, we're going to get yeah, a lot both of sides. Uh, I think a lot of the like customer service desks oh. are going to get affected because uh. a lot of people are going to go to machine learning chatbots to answer people's questions. And I will tell you that already drives me completely. Oh, it drives me crazy. Yeah, I hate it. I hate it. I mean, yeah, uh, they're just like. Uh, we think no one trains anybody anymore. So it's like, uh, how are you going to train AI correctly if no one has ever been trained correctly? Oh, exactly. So. You, I mean, that's the thing is, is now when you call customer service, a lot of the times, you know, still don't know what's going on anyway. But, you know, it, it's better than chatting with a chat bot. <laughs> I, yeah, day. no, I, yeah, I can, <laughs> I totally agree. I think that this is going to affect some copywriters. The yep. thing, um, but, but as far as, um, once you get up there, you got to ideate about, oh, wow, what a marketing word that I is. Love I just threw it. that, at, uh, <laughs> stupid, it's so dumb. Let me, let me okay. Google that. <laughs> Buzz, hey, Google, Buzzword. what does that ideate. word mean? When you got to ideate, ide you know, you got to figure out ideas for yep. promotions and marketing. You got to do the high level stuff. That is that's work that is still going to be human made. Like, yeah, a, 
a, a chat bot can probably give you some ideas, but they're not going to know all the specifics about mm-hmm. talking to vendors, what vendors are going to be needed, what all of the things are, uh, who, who's going to handle the porta potties? Do we yeah. need food? Um, do our, do our uh, servers need liquor licenses to actually serve beer at this venue? Or does the venue cover that? Who's got yep. the insurance? A chat bot isn't going to know all of those specifics. Yeah, I think maybe at the beginning, I think that social media copywriting is going to get hit hard. Absolutely. I think that's the main thing. I think you're going to start seeing content like social media content that's served up to you by bots, essentially. Um, I, I really think that because if you think of it, the the job of marketers you there used to be many different layers of marketing you know you would have people that were just digital people that were social people that were you know on air you know copywriters things like that things where these roles used to be sort of separate on their own. And then Mm -hmm. over time, it's been streamlined and streamlined and streamlined. And it's turned into, okay, you have one person now that has to do these five jobs. Well, I think AI is going to jump in on some of these things where they're definitely going to help marketers for sure, because there's a lot on any marketer's plate, but Mm -hmm. it's going to definitely, definitely be affecting anyone who does have that job where they don't have five different layers to their marketing position. If there are just copywriters and that is what they do. Yeah. I I absolutely see that effect. Well, I think the posers are going to go away. You're going to get the cream of the crop. (laughs) That's going to be the other thing. Um, My, my opinion is that, it's going to be more disruptive, I think, at the beginning as people kind of like shake out and kind of figure out what's happening. Yeah, it's going to it's it is going to lead to probably a reduction in the marketing workforce, because like like you said, the first thing that gets cut from a budget is the marketing and advertising 100%. every single time. And yeah. so that means like a person <laughs> like me or you. They're going to come to us and they're going to be like, hey, we got to cut budget. So we got to cut your marketing. And you know what? I'm sorry. You're going to have to lose your two coordinators, yeah. you know? And so <laughs> that's how all that work starts getting rolled up into one position. Um, but before the the program started, we were talking about how that's actually detrimental because mm-hmm. it it increases the frequency of burnout. Yeah. You got, if, if you're working 12 hour days and you're trying to be a creative writing social posts, coming up with marketing concepts or promotional concepts, if you're working like 60 hours a week mm-hmm. after a week and a half, two weeks, you're burnt out and your creativity is gone. At yep. that point, you're just checking boxes. And that's not fun. That that doesn't serve your consumers well. That's not going to get you the returns that you're look that your boss is looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's detrimental. So I think Absolutely. that Jet Chat GPT might be able to help some of people in our situations where we're like doing it all. Yeah, bring absolutely. The hour, bring the hours down a little bit because maybe we can cut an hour of social media writing. Exactly. I think that, and and that's the thing is, I think that that will be something where it is eventually, you know, it is a tool. It's a marketing tool, mm-hmm. just like we have Hootsuite and things like that. You know, yes. those there's that first wave of tools where it's like you had scheduling that 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 made life so much easier. Once we could schedule things, you know, you're like, yes, this is fantastic. It takes care of my social posts for me, and that's amazing. And so I think, yeah, that's the next evolution of it. Is now not only can we schedule these things out in advance, but we can now do everything that you normally would do. So I see um, these like machine learning capabilities assisting a lot with engagement, you know? So not only are they scheduling these posts and posting them, but they're engaging with your followers on behalf of you, because that's another thing that is extremely time consuming, you know, responding back to requests and things like that. You know, we already Mm -hmm. have auto responders and, you know, quick uh, responses and things like that, that we can add to our social media accounts. But I see that also being the next level as well. You know how we're talking about customer service run by AI. I also see engagement bots, you know, and having having sort of like that side of Your friendship is very important to me. 
Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, exactly. hopefully, you know, hopefully it'll get better and, and less, uh, less robotic, but that's the cool thing about the learning. I mean, that's, you know, it's scary. What could eventually, if you, you know, if you have that sort of doom mentality, you know, it's, <laughs> it, it is terrifying to think of what could come out of it, but a really cool thing that could come out of it is these like AI bots learn your consumers, learn your followers and learn what they like and how they like to be engaged and really tailor their approach to what your audience is looking for. I think that would be amazing because, you know, you still have that human air of like, you know, I think you would run into the same thing where, you know, bot is reading a comment, you're reading a comment, maybe it's misconstrued, maybe it does mean to be mean, but who knows, like, you know, so there, there's a, there's a level of misunderstanding, I think that could happen, but as it learns, that would be amazing if it could tailor the way that it communicates with your audience for you. And, and that's all taken care of. And, and you can get email updates from a bot. I mean, that would be cool. <laughs> and that would definitely right. streamline well, things. If we still have our marketing jobs six months from now <laughs> um, and we haven't gotten taken over by the robots, mm -hmm. we'll come back. We'll come back and we'll, we'll we'll fill in people about how this has changed marketing for us. <laughs> yeah, if we exactly. have our job still, uh, we'll do a I, might get, I might get fired. <laughs> Good luck to both of you. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, All right, today, Jet. Well, today's show is humanly brought to you by. Whoop tracks. Unleash the love. Do a good deed for dogs. Walking with the free Wolf Tracks app helps you earn for your favorite animal charity. Download the Wolf Tracks app, start walking your best friend, and unleash the love for all dogs. All right, more news on the Barry Funkhauser Show. Our guest today is the lovable Jet. <laughs> and Jet, you have the whole newspaper. Do you want to read the next newsworthy news moment that you decided to pick today? Yeah, I wanted to talk about uh, the poor Wiener Mobile, the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile getting its catalytic converter stolen. Oh. All right, let me tell you all about it here. Listen. Catalytic converter theft in the valley put the bite on one of America's most famous hot dogs overnight. Those driving the 27 foot long Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile say it was stolen in a hotel parking lot not too far from Flamingo in Paradise. Ryan Matthew gets into the messy details. The Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile was just looking to catch up with Las Vegas this weekend, but what was once cooking underneath it was stolen, joining an already stuffed problem in the valley. It was here overnight that those driving the 27 foot long meal on wheels woke up to some stalled buns. The hot dog was right here. Yeah, exactly right here. Bensky off Hacienda and Decatur towed it here. Imagine like a huge, gigantic hot dog in the middle of your bay. Bart's administrator, Joseph Rodriguez, says not only was the catalytic converter stolen, but so was everything leading up to it. There's like gaskets there that you, you need to reseal the, uh, the converter. And then there's sensors all along that area to regulate the heat and temperature of the system. Those are all gone as well. They, they tear that apart to get to what they want. The car part containing precious metals used to filter out harmful exhaust emissions into safe gases, sawed off and illegally sold for thousands. They literally just saw it off. Yeah. Take it. Yep. Run. Yep. Absolutely. A growing problem nationwide in Las Vegas. Metro police reporting over 2,600 thefts in 2022. State Farm reporting over 43,000 thefts nationally through July 2021 to June. 2022. Though these buns now have a temporary converter that can get it to pre Super Bowl appearances, the taste lasts only so long. They did like a little uh, minor repair, it's basically to have the vehicle running. It's not the correct part, it's just something temporarily. It's costing the, the person money and then the company and then just time. Now, he added that getting new catalytic converters is sometimes on a four-month back order. Metro police say it has not yet received a theft report, but the hotel where it was stolen from says its corporate division is actively investigating. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, it's the saddest story. Have you ever seen the Wienermobile in real life, Jet? I've seen it. I've seen it driving around. I think it was in Pasadena and I saw it drive by one time and I was like, that was the Wiener Mobile. I was very <laughs> far away from it. So I could just be completely lying to myself and saying that I saw another like orange or yellowy looking vehicle and thought it was it. But I swear it it looked like it. And I, I got really excited. I was probably like 12. <laughs> it's hard to like it, uh, confuse it with anything else. 
Exactly. That's why I, my first assumption was Wienermobile, but who knows? I mean, maybe someone drives a weird looking bus. Who, I don't know. <laughs> I just love the fact that that news story was just like full of puns. Oh, <laughs> know, right? So Wienermobile's in Las Vegas trying to catch up with, the, you know, this is and like, they oh, call, they call shotgun it. shotbun. Shotbun. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? So I want to ride shotbun. I oh. love it. I Barry's mean, he's uh, actually Jack, been inside the yeah, Wiener Mobile. Yep, yeah, been in it in Vegas. It did a little toury tour. And, <gasps> you know, Jet, we mm-hmm. here at the show, we love pomp and circumstance, especially when it comes to moving vehicles. <laughs> and, um, you know, the Wiener Mobile is one. The, um, the uh, Goodyear Blimp is another. Is yes. there any that you can think of here in Southern California that's just outrageous? I said that Jay Leno is the hardest, the most difficult one to spot in the <laughs> wild because you could be w- driving down the street and then up pulls up next to you is a guy wearing all jeans in some sort <laughs> Canadian of tuxedo. Yeah, some sort of toot toot honk, you know, and you give him a little nod. That's the one. That that's when you are officially a Southern Californian. When oh, oh I just remembered another one. Oh, I I got a good one for you. But Jack, <laughs> Jack, go first. What you name name a good one? Oh, that's that's hard. I mean, that's the thing is like if you are here long enough, you're gonna see Jay Leno. Um, also for a while too, it was Seinfeld back when he was doing comedians in cars getting coffee. You know, so that was always like a big thing. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. I mean, you know, they have those like star vans. You can't. I mean, you can't throw a rock, though, in Hollywood without hitting one. I'm trying to think of other iconic things out here. I, there are iconic people. <laughs> oh, no, no. I got. I, ha- I have an iconic but person who had, who had an iconic car. And once I say it, you're all oh, going to like. I'm going to know it. Yourself. Angeline. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Yes. And then like the, the, always the, the with pink, the billboard, the, too. Yeah. The pink uh, uh, Corvette. She yep. upgraded the Corvette yep. every now and then to a new Corvette, but it's always bright, bright, brightest pink. Yep. That, that I is think possible. I I think when I was younger, I was like, that's Barbie. That's Barbie. <laughs> that, I was yeah, very convinced yeah. that that was Barbie. You know, I mean, so I was like, good on you, Angeline. <laughs> it's pretty exactly. um, it's pretty interesting to run past her because I've I've run past Angeline twice. Oh, wow. Uh, can you guess what city I ran past? It was on the freeway on the 101, and I'll mm. narrow it down. It was after the valley and before where I live. And uh, Calabasas. Twice. Calabasas, Calabasas. Or Oaks. On the button. Yep. You <laughs> must live there. And I was like, there she is again. She, she does live there. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Absolutely. That's where all, all, the, all the rich, famous people live in Calabasas. <laughs> it's like that and and what is it homely hills and and uh oh yeah that's yeah. um is uh hidden hills and hidden, hidden hills. hills that's yes that's where v- vin scully had his house in hidden hills and have you ever if you've never taken a gander at vin scully's estate it is spectacular it is oh. just like the best looking house it's got like a nice wow pool, yeah nice like view over like um the the calabasas hills it's a really nice spot, man. I miss Ben. Wow, and his I really do miss like ben. drive driveway that goes like to his garage. It's like garages. It looks almost yes. like a bunch of carriage houses that are garages. Yes. I mean, that's that is gnarly. Wow. Yeah, but that's where all the that's where all the rich people live. So, um, yep. let me say, I'm trying to think of like other iconic cars. We mentioned uh, this week the the, the old uh, Adam West Batmobile. Have you ever seen that oh, going around? I have not, but I did get to see it at the Peterson Automotive Museum. Oh, nice! That's yeah, sweet. I, love, I that. love that place. Love that place. Oh yeah, and then also too, if you live in the Valley, you have probably been to a My Valley Pass event or like a GEC event, so you've probably seen the DeLorean. There's oh, the yeah, DeLorean and Kit. DeLorean and Kit, uh, oh. the Jurassic Park uh, Jeep. <laughs> I've <laughs> like, never seen Kit. Oh, you haven't seen Kit? I got to, I've I never got to seen sit inside Kit. of Kit. Yeah. Oh, no. Go to the Valley the, Relics They still have the point. It's two, it's two Ks. There are two Ts. A-I-T-T. <laughs> it's the Night Industries 2000. That's what Kit stands for. Oh, interesting. There we go. Yeah. 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 Man. So that, oh, I love yeah, it. That it's, was at it's our, got like the Cylon light on the mm-hmm. front and everything. I love it. So Kit was at our, our 2020 uh, toy drive. We did a toy and supply drive through um, for our toy drive that year so that we could, because, uh, you know, it's 
height of the the pandemic and people needed, yeah, you know, needed it. everything, socks, whatever. So yeah. So we had kit there uh, because of our partners over at my Valley pass are awesome. That's fantastic. The only other one that, that we talked about uh, earlier this week is mm -hmm. uh, back when uh, Sarah Michelle Geller and um, our, her husband were making the Scooby-Doo movies. They would oh, have the yeah. they had the Scoo they had the Scooby Mobile like the Scooby rolling Mobile around, rolling around Los Angeles. Is that Angeles still too. at uh wasn't that at Universal? Is that still Mystery at Universal? Machine? Yeah, yeah, Mystery, I think Machine. Mystery Machine is still at Universal. Yeah, I haven't been there in so long. Two O's, to one go B. Back. I got, oh, I got so cute. Yeah, there still we go. Yeah, there. the Scoop man, the Mystery <laughs> Machine. I love it. Yeah, I grew up watching <laughs> watching Scooby Doo as a kid. Loved it. I I'm a huge huge like true crime fan, so I think that oh, started very early yeah. with with Scooby Doo. <laughs> yeah, that, and, like exactly. Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys. You know, reading oh, those and then watching Scooby Doo and 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 watching Columbo growing up and stuff. Like <laughs> I was. Oh, my oh God. yeah. Oh heck That's yes. Oh, uh, I remember favorites. like. The old Magnums were like my my go to. I think that's also where I got my love of Hawaii from was watching oh, the old Magnum PIs yeah, with yeah. Tom Selleck. Oh, good stuff. Well, anyway, <laughs> stop stealing ca catalytic converters, you thieves. We want our hot dogs. And, and, you Especially know, the Wienermobile, world. man. We need to cruise that around, keep that thing going on the road, man. That's I call shop bun. Jet, jet, jet. Oh, <laughs> can we can we can we can we hire them? Can we have a Wienermobile out here this summer as part of a They all moved out of California, man. They're all gone. Type <laughs> I know we have to catch them while they're coming, you know, swinging through town. I know we got to get them on. Oh, I, oh, I'm going to call you. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll work for free to bring the Wiener Mobile to 85. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's that how invested amazing. I am. How invested <laughs> I am. I want hot dogs. All right. You know, well, let's do one more news story before mm -hmm. we get out the door this week jet what's the third one that you've decided to pick of all the newspaper news stories to this week well you know that i have to talk about what's going on with uh medieval times and everything there <laughs> yeah well a real life battle hit the parking lot outside of medieval times in buena park where employees went on strike this past week listen it is a real-life battle at Medieval Times. Recently, unionized workers there went on strike today. They're demanding better pay and working conditions at their Buena Park Castle. The American Guild of Variety Arts now represents the employees, and they claim the company has tried to silence their voices ever since they voted to unionize. Today's 215 show was the last of the day, and picket lines were then up to stop guests as they arrived. It was fantastic, but it's uh, it was a little hard going in with them picketing because I agree with what they're saying. I think that if um, they're not being treated right, they should be. They make the show, not Medieval Times. We are striking for unfair labor practices. They've been censoring us. They've been censoring our supporters on social media. They took down our TikTok that had like 8,000 followers. Um, they're just trying to silence us because they know that they're not treating us fairly. Well, we did reach out to Medieval Times for a response, but have not heard back. So, Jet, would you cross the picket line to see the checkered knight win? Um, I don't think I would, uh, just because purely as being someone who also is uh, t on the talent side of things, I personally would probably stand by them because I would stand on the side of talent um, and fair labor, uh, you know, whether it's wages and treatment and things like that, you know, I, I would stand on their side. So I wouldn't cross that line. I do hope that they resolve it soon, though, because like I said, I would love to go there for my birthday this year. Yeah. I do like so what, is, what does Mookie say about you working 14 hour days? <laughs> What does Mookie say <laughs> about you working 14 hour days when you are clearly supporting people for good work life balance <laughs> and proper pay? <laughs> I mean, hey, you know, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah. that's a different it's, story. We all know it's yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely something that's got to be corrected. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's it's. I, I definitely am on the side of talent and 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 supporting supporting them. So I wouldn't cross the lines during a strike. But what color I do... do you go for it? Medieval times. What oh, that's a good question. Typically, are you a, I do... are you vegetarian? Are you eating the whole chicken? Or I am eating chicken. Give you a chicken. leg. 
I am eating chicken. I well, a lot of the times, you know, most of the time I'm 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 pretty pescatarian, but I I have to go there and I have to eat a chicken leg. That's just it's just gonna happen. So and and have you know a stein of beer. So <laughs> just always one stein. Oh no, multiple definitely, but <laughs> <laughs> but you know that's that's you know it's like, it's like going to Disneyland. You know you have to have a pineapple skewer and a pickle skewer. Like you know that's kind of like I have my go tos everywhere, and if I'm gonna go to medieval times, it has to be chicken leg and a beer <laughs> every time. But oh, I yeah, probably, at, mm-hmm. at Disneyland you, you're you're not a turkey leg person. You don't no, go to Adventureland and get the big turkey leg. And, I'm like, not walk even around. A, I'm not even a churro person. I'm like oh, I like no their. Churros? I'm, I am a, uh, salted pretzel. I am a, you know, dill pickle and pineapple skewer person. Like, so when I'm, and, and the number one place is always, you know, going to be bangle barbecue. Got to get the, the banyan beef <laughs> done. Like, you know, so gotta I've got the skewer. Yeah. yeah. Got to get the skewer. That's like the first thing my, my fiance and I, when we go to Disneyland, w- the second we can put in the mobile order for bangle barbecue, we, we're in there. We're already in oh, there for and we go and hit that. Oh yeah. You hit that. And then you get right on Indiana Jones right after you're done eating. It's fantastic. It's so <laughs> funny. Everybody has like their, their, their Disneyland, uh, game plan. Yeah. And it's so funny. Like people do not deviate from their Disneyland game plan. 100%. They're like, I have, I, they're like, I have figured, <laughs> I have figured out Disneyland. I have been here. I know what I'm going to do. Yeah. Me and Joe were talking about, uh, lobbying for an adults only, Disneyland Adventure, because oh, nice. uh, why did that come up, Joe? Do you remember? Yeah, there was a story uh, this week about a New Jersey res- Italian restaurant that mm-hmm. had banned children under 10. Because oh, yeah, I it heard was about just that. like it just got to be too too much for them to handle. Like the parents weren't ever taking care of their 10 year old kids or under 10 year old kids, they were yeah. running around and they were really um, messing with other people's meals and, and really, uh, you know, not making a pleasant dining experience for everybody. So they just outlawed it. And that's how we got into whether Disney would ever have an adults only day. I know that would be really cool. It, it would be, I mean, you know, that day would be the fastest selling day if if they did that, if they announced it, that would sell out in probably five minutes online. I'm sure. Well, with no, how many no, Disney adults minute. there are. Easy, <laughs> yeah, exactly. A minute, a minute, a minute flat. But yeah, I mean that would be amazing because you know for the longest time I had uh, back when I was in college, I had a an annual pass every year, and that was like my favorite thing. Is you know when I knew that oh you know I don't have to be in class today, I can I can just leave at my lunch. You know my next <laughs> class is is you know they're watching a movie or something like that, that I already have at home, whatever, you know, I could just ditch. So that was always something where I would go, I'd go get lunch at downtown Disney and go right in and ride. Like I'm, I would have a plan of attack and ride like this one, this one, this one today. Like, you know, I'm going to hit exactly. at least space mountain. And then I'm going to hit like two other easy rides. Like I would have one big landmark ride and then two easy rides. And then that would be my thing. And I'd grab lunch at downtown Disney, but that it is hard, you know, and especially too, with like the stroller situation, you get some of the some of the you know people that have the double double wide triple wide strollers or you know three <laughs> three deep stroller. It's like, oh man, try not to get hit by one of those. That's kind of the game is is try not to get hit and and you know that's a that's a fun way to have fun with. We those. were Zealand. we were saying that like it's usually adults only after about ten p.m. anyway. Any like part. summer weeknight. Mm-hmm. My my thing is I think I might actually pay a premium. Not for an adults only day, mm-hmm. but for a uh, a quarter um, capacity day, like a one quarter capacity. We are only going to let in like capacity for Disneyland, only Disneyland, not not California Adventure. I think capacity for Disneyland mm-hmm. is what, 150,000 in a day? It's I think got to be. I think they cap it at around uh, at around that. So imagine if. Again, you'd have to pay a premium. Yeah. But if there were only 25,000 people in the entire park oh, for the entire day, could you that imagine would, that? That would be amazing. You could get on any ride you want with like a 10 minute wait. <laughs> like, yeah, think that about would be like, spectacular. How, would you pay a premium for that? There would still be kids around. You know, it, it's not an adult only day, but mm-hmm. it's 
it's it's either like quarter or half capacity day. Honestly, I think I'm with you there, Joe, actually. I think I'm with you on, I would take the quarter capacity versus the all adults day because there are some annoying adults out there. Let's be honest. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah. and you, so, and you, you know, know that people are going to get way too hammered. They're going to get way yeah. too hammered and they're going to, yeah. they're going to be kids anyway and destroy mm-hmm. it. Exactly. So, yeah, give me, give me yeah. half, a quarter I like, or half capacity day. I love that. I love that idea. I think a quarter or half. Yeah. I mean, and and that's kind of what they were doing, you know, when the pandemic hit and they were starting to let people in. You would have to right. make your reservations and all of that. So, yeah, you just lessen the amount of people that can reserve. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. I'm you know, it. see what mm-hmm. happens when you put a bunch of marketing people in the same room together. You get great <laughs> ideas. <laughs> I know this is definitely what happens when you get marketers in the building. But okay. uh, like you were saying, uh, Barry, like what team am I on for medieval times? I'm usually blue or green because there's red, yellow, blue, green, right? I think that's it's yes. the four of them. Yeah. yeah. So I'm usually blue or green. Um, on occasion, I'll go for yellow and I never go for red. I, I never go for red either. I'm always blue. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm typically blue. blue or green. <laughs> so, so, a lot of okay. value. So if Medieval Times is going to be on strike, where are you going to have your bachelorette party? Oh, gosh, I don't know. <laughs> I maybe, think... maybe maybe half capacity to see my day. <laughs> that would be amazing. It's like, hey, so so hey, Bob, guess what? You want to you want to shut hey, down half hey, of Disneyland Bob, for me today? You, you, you and I are on first name basis, huh? Right. Because, yeah, I got to have those. Connect- nah. <laughs> You'd be like, who the let heck me, are you? Let me, just, let me just call it Bob right now. Okay? Hey, Bob. It's Jen over at 88.5. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. You know me. You know me. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I have no idea. I have no idea. My girlfriends are 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 gonna probably plan something. It what it's sounding like is that it won't be one bachelorette party. Uh, it's going to be multiple over a while. <laughs> so that's well. pretty much. I have to brace myself for several different variations of bachelorette parties. So got to got to get great ready. Friend, got some great friends there. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that. Well, Jet, we can hear you every morning on 88.5 The SoCal Sound with Nick. And uh, we're, is there anything else that you'd like them to follow you on or something? I mean, we're going to see you at all these shows coming up in the summer. So mm-hmm. can people just come up to you and say, hi, Jet, how are you? It's good to meet you. you- yeah, totally. Totally. I'm I'm always down to meet people at shows and, and say hi. And so, yeah, it's like, don't be afraid of that. And, and yeah, you can follow me on in- Instagram is my favorite platform. I'm not posting a lot because, you know, Joe, is, as a marketer, you kind of <laughs> lose track of your own personal marketing oh, um, yeah. but yeah so I, I i use instagram it's point and click it's easy i love it it's very visual so uh jet underscore on the air is my handle on instagram feel free to to give it a follow and follow the station at the socal sound yes yeah. the socal sound 88.5 station of the year in the non-commercial category yeah. in 2022 and jet had a lot to do with that so congratulations jet Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Our, our programming's definitely, I mean, man, it's hitting its amazing stride. And I think just, yeah, the promotions of the, of the station as a whole has really helped get us to where we are now. So it's, it's a very prideful moment. And we hope to have you back on the podcast yet. Will will you come back on the thing at some point? Absolutely. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> All right. Have a good weekend, everybody. Good to yes. see you. Good to see you. This <laughs> is the Barry Funkhauser Show.